What is up guys? In this video, we're going to be discussing the general mole balance equation. And in our efforts to design and model chemical reactors, this is arguably going to be one of the most important topics that you fundamentally understand. And what we're going to be doing, first of all, is drawing a control volume around our reactor. And this general mole balance equation will apply both to our flow reactors, in which we've got constant streams coming in and out of our process, as well as batch reactors, in which we have a flow in and then we cap our reactor, we let a reaction occur and then we take our products out. Um, we're still going to use this same balance equation. This applies to every single reactor you're ever going to work with on as a chemical engineer. And so uh, the very first thing to note here about the uh, notation that I'm working with is I am defining something called F sub I naught to be the number of moles of component I that enter our system per time. And I also have another variable here, F sub I, which denotes the number of moles of I that exit our system per time. And then we have a control volume, which can be a reactor, like a CSTR. And within the CSTR, we're going to have some rate of generation. So I'm going to call this a G sub I. And so turning back to the, uh, the balance equation that we learned from day one as chemical engineers, we know that accumulation is equal to I minus O plus G minus C. And um, accumulation is equal to N minus out plus generation minus consumption. Generally in your uh, design class, people will lump these two terms together and just call this like a uh, G sub I term, which is what I'm gonna do here as well. And so what we're gonna say here is the accumulation that we care about within our control volume in this case is the change in the number of moles of I, D sub NI, DT, which will be equivalent to the number of moles that we have coming into our reactor, which we just said was FI naught, minus whatever's coming out, which is F sub I. And then in this case, we're gonna have this generation term G sub I within our reactor. And so this G sub I term is where things can get a little bit interesting because if we're to look at different parts of our reactor, assuming because we will be working with types of reactors that are not necessarily entirely the same throughout. Um, what we're going to find is that, you know, at volume one and volume two, we may potentially be having a different uh, rate of reaction occurring inside of our plug flow reactor, for instance. And so this will make determining our overall rate of generation of component I a little bit more tricky. And so keeping things as generic as possible, what we're typically going to do in our classes is that we will uh, define something and essentially integrate over our control volume in order to determine what our rate of reaction is. And uh, you know, to kind of spell this out a little bit more explicitly, what we have generally is we define something called R sub I to be the rate of generation of your component i and these are like moles so however many moles of component i we are generating per volume of our reactor per time and so an example of this would be like we're making 10 moles of water every cubic meter within our reactor every second um, that would be an example of what r sub i would be now the issue that we have to take into account here is that r sub i can be a function of the volume. And so what I mean by that is based on inside of our reactor, maybe at you know the lower right corner of our uh, plug flow reactor, we have a different rate of reaction that's occurring than within the upper left corner of our reactor. And in that case, we have to take into account that R sub I is a function of whatever, wherever we are inside of our control volume. And so what we do to account for this is we essentially say that G sub I will be equivalent to an integral from your, from like zero to the total volume of your reactor, big V of R sub I times DV. And if you are fortunate enough to be working in reactors where the volume is not, or the, your rate of reaction does not depend on the where you are inside of your reactor. You can pull this term out, and then you can let G sub I simply be equivalent to 
R sub i times the total volume inside of your reactor. But keeping things as high level and generic as possible, this is typically what we have to make sure our G sub i term is equivalent to. And so to uh, give the final formula in terms of what is the uh, rate of reaction or how do we design a general, or what does our general mole balance equation look like for all of the reactors we're gonna be working with in our uh, chemical reactor design class, we arrive at the following in which we have the rate of accumulation of the number of moles of a particular species I is equivalent to however many moles of I we have coming into our reactor minus however many moles of I are leaving reactor for our control volume and then we have plus and keeping it high level we are integrating from zero to the total volume of a reactor of the rate of reaction term here times the change in volume here. And so um, if r sub i is some function of volume, then we would have to take more things into account, which would make our math a little bit trickier. But for the sake of this equation, this is what we ultimately arrive at. And in future videos, we're going to be applying this to look at specific situations such as a CSTR or a batch reactor or some kind of plug flow reactor. And in the plug flow reactor, that's where this term right here is going to get really interesting. So um, I hope this helps. Let me know if you have any questions and thanks for watching.